I'm Rene uh, Siria Cruz. I used to be the uh, editor of Katipunan, the uh, newspaper of uh, the Union of Democratic Filipinos, or KDP. I used to be uh, national coordinator of the Anti-Martial Law Coalition. So we would like to welcome everyone to the first uh, memorial, uh, Selmi Domingo and Jean Viernes Memorial Forum. Uh, hopefully, uh, this will be the start of an institution that we periodically gather friends and uh, people we work with politically for a discussion of uh, events, not just about the Philippines, but hopefully uh, of international events and local events too. So uh, <clears throat> on a personal note, <clears throat> I'm very glad to see everybody, uh, old friends, and uh, very much relieved that everybody got older. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, love those wrinkles. <laughs> so, anyway, uh, I first uh, came to Seattle in the, it was a dismal winter of 1978, I think, or 1979, as the national coordinator of the Anti Martial Law Coalition. And that's where I first met the Seattle, Seattle chapter of the KDP. I think they were mostly Filipino-Americans uh, who didn't speak Tagalog, maybe a smattering of Cebuano or, or Ilocano. And, uh, but they were all working against the Marcos dictatorship, so it was a very good feeling. On the other hand, it was like stepping into a chapter of uh, Carlos Bulosan's America is in the Heart. Uh, again, it was dismal winter, and then sell me Took me on a, uh, took me in his big American car and drove me around, <laughs> and the international district, and uh, we went to. He took me to the uh, Caballeros de Dimas Alang Hall, where a group of old men were playing cards, and we went to the kitchen and raided it. You know, we went. We had a greasy uh, fried fish and uh, and pinakbet. So, and then he took me to a uh, tenement house. I think, and I met the uh, legendary labor leader, Chris Mensalvas, uh, and I, I had a pint of whiskey with me, and so we, jo we had a cheerful, you know, uh, carelessly, recklessly, unmindful of the fact that Chris was already an amputee from diabetes, <laughs> so, but we all had a good time, you know, uh, and then, uh, Jean I met, uh, well, Jean I met here and then, stayed with, uh, in the, I, I, when I first moved to the uh, Bay Area headquarters of the KDP in Oakland to be the editor of uh, Katipunan in 1980. Uh, Jean Vienes was there. He had just gone through a labor school uh, in the Bay Area, and he was on his way to the Philippines. Uh, I think for the first time, at least in his adult life. And we gave him a briefing. In the Philippines, he, he visited and met with the uh, leaders of the KMU, or the May 1st Labor Movement. He also spent some time with some units of the New People's Army, somewhere in central Luzon. Uh, came back to the city in Manila, and then felt he was being followed. Came back to the Bay Area, and we debriefed him. And he, when he, uh, a month or so, a couple months later, uh, he and Selmy were gun gunned down. Uh, so that was my personal Seattle uh, connection. Uh, today's memorial forum uh, honor the work of Jin and Selmy and of those of us who were active uh, during the dark days of, uh, Marshall, of, of Marcus's uh, dictatorial rule. Our aim is to gather friends who, and uh, former activists and, and friends who worked with us who were not in our organization uh, to, to have a discussion of what is happening in the Philippines now. When we were working together with most of you, we shared a, a, uh, an orientation with you uh, that gave all of us an understanding of what was taking place in the Philippines. Uh, it was a semi-colonial, semi-feudal society. Uh, we, had, we shared the orientation that 
the Marcos dictatorship was the immediate obstacle to uh, social change uh, and democratic change in the, in the Philippines. Uh, that, that dictatorship served to focus the attention of all progressives and all people working for change on a single target. And that was true for about 14 years. Uh, that was the orientation we worked with. Now, the question is, uh, with the overthrow of the dictatorship, how do we look at events in the Philippines? Now that the immediate obstacle is gone, uh, what has changed? Uh, how do you conduct a struggle under the restored uh, democratic spaces and, uh, and, free and, and institutions? Now, uh, in the past, uh, our concrete analysis of concrete conditions. You know? <laughs> uh, it worked for us for a while. You know, we never really, we never, because of the dictatorship, it was immediate. We never really looked look back and tried to assess well, what has changed in the world while we were doing that. Okay? And unfortunately, uh, that concrete analysis apparently was casting concrete. <laughs> it's still in 1978. You know, meanwhile, I mean, uh, the fax machine has come and gone, and you know, <laughs> mobile phones. Yeah, the uh, <laughs> you know, Facebook, Facebook, you know. Well, Sam Maria Sison, the founder of the Communist Party, is now using Facebook instead of, you know. But he hasn't changed his analysis. <laughs> so, uh, the, um, you know, the uh, globalization of the economy has really deepened. You know, I just learned the other day that it used to be about 30, 30 countries uh, had a growth rate of 7%. Now there are over 100 countries have a growth rate of 7%. That's a big change in the economic relations worldwide. Uh, back in 1968, the Chinese revolutionaries whom we, we adored uh, uh, was still attacking Beethoven. And uh, criticized, yeah, criticizing Confucius. They were not yet singing to hip hop or uh, or shopping at Prada. You know. uh, all that has changed. But unfortunately, the uh, good section of the progressive movement in the Philippines, uh, a much diminished uh, National Democratic Front, still working under the same concrete analysis of concrete conditions. In concrete, you know. So <laughs> the question is uh, today: is that how how are we going to look at things uh, now? Now I, I'm putting a, a terrible burden on our guest speakers, <laughs> Walden <Wild Daniel, laughs> and, and Risa Antiveros, because we might be expecting them to give us the definitive analysis of, uh, but we're not. You know, we're really just asking them to. <laughs> Give us an inkling, you know, so provide us some insights that could at least give us a, a glimpse of the informational ge geology that we could use as a, uh, as a framework for uh, looking at the world, looking at the Philippines, and what has to be done in the context of these new conditions. Okay. <laughs>